Hello world, what's the most important and sensitive computer systems on the planet, which if they were hacked would be an absolute monumental disaster, what do those computer systems have in common? They're air gapped. Air gapping essentially means isolating a computer system or network from all other networks. And most importantly, this means no internet access at all. Sure, it's inconvenient. If you work on an air-gapped system, you can't browse your favorite mildly humorous subreddits. You've got to keep yourself entertained by offline means only. But as far as protecting a computer system goes, air-gapping is the ultimate defense. Malware almost always originates from some outside threat, whether that's a dodgy link or an evil email. So the best catch-all solution to prevent these threats is simply to disconnect from Wi-Fi and cut your ethernet cables. This approach is often used for industrial systems, power grids, anything that has nuclear in the name, and pipelines. Fun fact, when it comes to the recent colonial pipeline hack that caused fuel shortages and havoc in parts of America, the pipeline itself wasn't hacked at all. In fact, it was fine. The air gapping did its job. What was hacked was the billing system which monitors the flow of fuel. What's the point of pumping fuel if you can't charge for it? And so they just shut the whole thing down. Air gapping may be a good defense, but people, specifically governments, are going to want to hack juicy targets no matter what obstacles are in their way. Cybersecurity company ESET has analyzed every single known case of hackers trying to break into air gap systems, which has only happened 17 times globally. Well, that we know of at least. ESET came to a peculiar discovery. Every single hack had one common trait. They all used weaponized USB drives, this is such an important point that it's literally the only bit of text in the whole article that they've put in bold. So how do you hack an air gap system with a USB drive? Oh, and by the way, for the YouTube mod watching this, th this isn't a tutorial, I, I promise. Typically a facility, for example, a nuclear power station, isn't going to be 100% air gapped. Even a nuclear power station needs people to man the phone lines, answer emails and so on. So these people will work on an internet connected network. But the idea is that even if this network is hacked, no amount of lateral movement or privilege escalation will get a hacker what they want, because the control systems that handle all the fun and juicy stuff will be air-gapped from this network and, of course, the wider internet. Usually, the plan of action is to first somehow compromise the system which is connected to the internet, then install malware on this system which automatically weaponizes connected USB sticks. Then hope that one of these USB sticks somehow makes its way to the air gap system. How? Well, employees might need to update software on the air gap system, so they're going to use a USB drive. Or maybe an employee uses a USB stick to store a portable version of Minecraft for when they get bored. Who knows? After the malicious USB stick installs malware on the air gap system, it performs reconnaissance. Then stolen data is copied back to the USB stick until it is plugged into the already compromised connected system, where it is then exfiltrated to the attacker controlled command and control server. Sometimes the attackers program in the ability to send further commands to the malware, so they can change the plan of attack as they go. Everything in orange here refers to that kind of attack. Let's look at some real-world examples. Thanks to ESET's report, we have quite a smorgasbord to choose from. And can we just take a second to appreciate the weird names of these hacks? Sure, there are some boring names like USB stealer and USB thief, zero out of 10 for creativity, but there's also brutal kangaroo, easy cheese, and fanny, which I think must have a different meaning in America where they came up with this name. And no, I'm not going to risk demonetization by explaining that one. Anyway, let's look at PlugX. Boring name, yes. However, the name of the group behind it more than makes up for it. They're called Mustang Panda, which is a Chinese-based group. The purpose of the PlugX hack was to perform espionage against unknown entities. Unfortunately, as with many hacks, the whole story isn't public, so we don't know who the victim was here or even what kind of facility was being attacked. The initial compromise targeted a connected part of the unknown entity's network through malware-laden spear phishing emails. Once the PlugX malware had been installed, it monitored for the arrival of USB drives and weaponized them. Their method of weaponization wasn't even rocket science at all, but it is sneaky. On the USB drive, the malware created a hidden folder called recycle.bin and put their malware inside of it. Then it made these shortcut files which pointed to the malware in the hidden folder. Double-click the shortcuts and you open the malware. Now, if you've ever made a shortcut on Windows, you'll know you can change the icon to pretty much anything, including a folder icon. The only thing that gives it away is the shortcut overlay in the bottom left, which, to be fair, is easily missed. 
The idea was an unwitting victim would then plug this USB drive into the air gaps network. Then their curiosity would get the better of them. They'd wonder what the hell are these strange folders? Then they'd open one of the shortcuts, triggering the malware. The malware would scan the system for certain documents, encrypt them and copy them back to the USB drive until it was plugged back into the connected system from which they would then be exfiltrated over the interwebs to the hackers. The plug exec is an example of non-automated execution in that the malware on the USB stick has to be manually run by an unwitting victim. Though some USB hacks fall into the automated category, these hacks don't require any user interaction at all. Just plugging in a USB drive is enough to pwn the air gap system. These are infinitely more advanced than just hoping someone double clicks on a disguised shortcut. The most notorious example of this comes in the form of Stuxnet, only the most famous hack of all time. Stuxnet was a joint US and Israeli mission to hack into Iran's Natanz nuclear facility, which resulted in the destruction of 10% of Iran's centrifuges used to enrich uranium. That hack utilized a now famous vulnerability which exploited a remote code execution bug in Windows shortcuts icons. As soon as the icon loaded on the target PC, malicious code was executed. This required no human interaction at all other than opening the folder the exploited file was located in. As is obvious, hacking an air gap system isn't straightforward. All of these hacks were carried out by APTs, or Advanced Persistent Threats. This refers to hacker groups known for using advanced and sophisticated techniques. Persistent because they're continuous in their efforts to hack their targets, remaining in the victim network for long periods of time. And threats, well, because there are threats, because they do naughty things. These groups typically belong to nation states. Now, none of these hacks were money-making activities. All 17 of our cases shared a common purpose, espionage, as well as they all used USB sticks, of course. Other than USB sticks, there are some more interesting and creative ways to exfiltrate data. One commonly cited example is using the speakers of an air gapped computer to transmit data encoded in ultrasonic sound waves. Humans can't hear these, but an attacker could record this sound and decode the data. One slightly more crazy example is called Fansmitter. It takes a use case where an infected computer has no speakers. Instead, it encodes data in the sound emitted by a computer's CPU and chassis fans. It does this simply by changing the fan speed. Now, this isn't even totally theoretical. There's a whole research paper on this and even a demonstration video. However, these examples are completely academic. There's been no known example of these methods being used in the wild. ESET have also detailed some ways of defending air gaps networks but they haven't discovered any groundbreaking new techniques. They've mostly rehashed tried and true methods like disabling USB ports on air gap systems and keeping systems updated. This video is sponsored by Linode, who are giving you $100 worth of free cloud computing. Linode is a totally customizable cloud hosting platform. Whether you're looking to quickly spin up a VPN, website, or host a Kubernetes cluster, Linode has you covered. If it runs on Linux, it'll run on Linode. Linode just announced availability of their NVMe block storage, the first alternative cloud provider to officially support this state-of-the-art hardware at no extra cost to their customers. Linode's philosophy is to focus on providing all the tools a developer really needs at competitive prices. Use the link in the description now to claim your free $100. If you enjoy this kind of video, make sure to help me out by fondling the like button for the YouTube AI, as well as turning on those sub notifications. If you want to see what goes on behind the scenes, make sure to follow me on the Instagrams. I'm at John T and I will of course link it in the description. And if you're looking for something to watch next, go check out my previous video on what the bulletproof hosting is. As always, sources will be linked in the video description. Stay tuned for more hacking videos and have a good one.